What is today's date? Today is December 28th, 2016. Uh, the outrage that I was attacked in Israel for being an anti-Semite uh, who was close to people uh, in the white supremacy Nazi movement in the United States who were anti-Semitic was outrageous. And uh, it was uh, the Clinton operation uh, that, uh, uh, that called me a self-loathing Jew. Later on, when I opposed Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton literally called me a self-loathing gay. But that's another story. Huh. This is a place where I placed Arthur. This is one of his favorite spots on Walding Field. I don't know how he would feel about cameras looking at him. He hated cameras, and he hated to be interviewed. Forgive me. Miss you. I remember one time sitting with Arthur, and I said, do you ever sit back and think about how much history you've actually made? He said, you know, George, I don't think I've ever made history. I think I've just touched history. But when you look at this front page from 1997, you have Netanyahu and Arafat on the Hebron pullout. You have a Giuliani proposal. You have Pataki. You have the Democrat who quit the ethics panel, the Swiss bank issue. This is one day in the New York Times, front page, and five articles have something to do with Arthur Finkelstein. You think of the impact of the senators and the congressmen that he helped elect. Jim Buckley, Jesse Helms, Alphonse D'Amato, Connie Mack. He helped elect governors, and none greater than George Pataki. Three terms as the governor of a democratic state. A victory over Mario Cuomo. This is a man who really could have been president. And then the biggest of all, he helped save Ronald Reagan's career. Ronald Reagan won the Cold War. Is there anything else that is more important in the last 50, 100 years? From ABC News. Arthur Finkelstein, a Republican consultant who until this year, at least to me, was sort of unknown. Mr. Finkelstein is one of the authors of Just Call Your Opponent a Liberal. Say, alarmingly liberal, increasingly liberal. So Arthur Finkelstein based all of his ideas, all the strategy, all the messaging of any campaign, no matter how small or how large, on research. and he through his data and through his research, understood very early that there was a dividing line in America, a dividing line between left and right, between Republicans and Democrats, between conservatives and liberals, in terms of language. And the dividing line was the wording of justice versus freedom. Even in today's politics, the idea of freedom, if you listen to a Republican candidate for president, if you will, the word freedom is throughout the speech. It was that same yearning for freedom that nearly 250 years ago gave birth to a special place called America. He always felt that in campaigns, the candidate was a celebrity, that he should not be, you know, he should be way behind the scenes. So we have boxes of files from the office. We were talking about these papers. And I said, Arthur, it's a lot of junk. He said to me, you might not think I'm important, but I'm sure some people might think I'm important. And then when he died and the Library of Congress contacted us, it was like, oh, God, I was dopey again. My brother is, you know, still the smartest person in the room. Here we go. Uh, the point is this. 
Uh, we're, we're living in fear again. All the police uh, have been in contact with some security people about this. They have put my family at risk for absolutely no reason at all, and I want this on tape for the world to see.